Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Hopefully, you're enjoying your time at OC6 so far. My colleague Joe and I are here today as advocates for developers, so we're excited to get the opportunity to speak with you about some of our learnings. With extensive help from our colleagues Matthias Zillman and Alex Steele, who couldn't be here today, we'll be sharing some of our data insights, how they motivated some store features, and how we plan on equipping you with tools to further optimize in the store. Here's an outline of what we plan on speaking about today. We'll start with some high-level interesting facts about the users, the content ecosystem, and their intersection, leading into how they motivated store features, both recently live and upcoming. Lastly, we'll conclude with a look at how we, further, uh, how we plan on further equipping you with pub uh, publishers and developers to derive your own data insights to optimize in our store. As a data scientist, my job is to make sure that users find what they're looking for and that similarly, your apps are made available to the right people at the right time. I'm often asked what features would be most impactful for our users and our developers, and to me, this requires a fundamental understanding of what our users look like and what their aggregate behaviors look like. In that effort, let's start with some high-level stats to set the scene here, just so we're on the same page. To start, Oculus owners are located around the world with distributions by VR headsets looking relatively similar across business regions. Unsurprisingly, the largest cohorts of Oculus owners are in North America, here in the United States. And abroad, we have sizable presence in both Europe and Asia. Due to this internationalization, we think that it's important that we make, that we make content accessible to local gamers to get them to ultimately convert. This includes extending the accessibility of the in-app experience to make your titles more enticing to all users, not just to those that speak English. Through analysis of their behaviors, we're equipped to look at how interests differ across various cohorts of users. For example, we've been able to identify broadly how interests differ between the genders. In the current population of Oculus owners, we see that women typically interact with more casual, exploratory, and social experiences while their male counterparts have strong affinities to experiences around arcade games, FPS, and action. We've also observed some general patterns among various age groups. Perhaps as expected, we see that older Oculus owners generally engage more often with casual experiences and immersive simulations, while younger Oculus owners seem to prefer experiences that are a bit more involved, like action and adventure and sports. Interestingly, every age group expressed an interest in social applications. This makes social, uh, social content ideal for appealing to users of all ages. So at a high level, that's what our gamers look like, but how do they engage with the store in particular? What do we know about how they make browse and purchase behaviors, or purchase decisions? How are they discovering and engaging with content? Answers to these questions can help inform what users are looking for and where. In particular, I'll share with, with you what we found among our Quest users, the, our newest headset, which in a lot of cases can be generalized across all users regardless of headset. For one, we know that buyers are more likely to entitle in VR than they are in their companion apps or in the browser's VR web storefront. So while browser, buyers may spend more time browsing content in the app or in the browser's in or out of our site, we see that they ultimately entitle in VR. We also found that of the multiple channels along which they can purchase content, that's the home feed, search, store, and wish list, for example, buyers make the majority of the purchases in the store. So we know that they understand this to be the primary place to find and entitle interesting content. Going a level deeper, we've seen that historically users depend heavily on top charts, things like top selling and most popular, to find interesting content, resulting in these accounting for about a fifth of all store purchases. Another store mechanism that we know is very important in browsing and purchasing is search. And we recognize it to be one of the primary ways high intent buyers find things that they're looking for. We can see this in the composition of the most frequently occurring search queries. Of these, about 80% correspond to exact titles. That's how we know that they're high intent. 15% correspond to broader genres or categories like FPS or horror. And the remaining 5% by volume typically map to the app's price characteristic, like free, cheap, or paid. Later in the talk, I'll share how we use these findings in upcoming search features. We now have a rough sense of what Oculus owners look like. How does the content ecosystem line up with this? 
Let's start with genres. First, let me point out that most titles are associated with more than one genre. For example, Beat Saber is associated with casual, music, and sports. Looking at these tags across all quest titles, here are the number of titles for each of the top 15 most occurring, frequently occurring quest, quest genres. As expected, broader genres like casual occur much more frequently than more specific genres like roller coaster, but some patterns are nevertheless notable. Action content is much more prevalent than social content, and sports occurs more than five times in travel. A really interesting observation arises when we look at how purchase behaviors are affected by price. When looking at the conversion rates of apps with respect to how much they cost, we see that purchase rates do not decline as a function of price, as we may reasonably expect. What this may mean is that buyers are more sensitive to perceived or actual value for the money that they're paying, and not priced irrespective of the content itself. With this in mind, we advise that developers very mindfully uh, price their apps displayed alongside media apps assets that most accurately reflect uh, their apps standout features. With this understanding of how Oculus gamers engage with the store with data and what we've heard extensively through user research, we're excited to announce some of the features we're either currently testing or working to implement in the new future. I'll talk about these features in two broad categories. The first category of features are those that are directly related to the product detail page, or what you'll often hear me refer to as a PDP. We've heard extensively from Oculus owners the importance of the appeal of the PDP and what, items are, what item details are most and least important to them. In this vein, we'll be testing with making media assets much more immersive and dynamic, both in and out of VR, by letting them take more center stage with full screen media in our companion app and a similarly full view experience in VR. We've also heard from our users what item details are most and least important, and we'll be adjusting their placement on the PDP accordingly. While preserving a prevalent purchase button, we will showcase what we are told are the most important characteristics, star rating, category, for example, without the loss of access to further details if they're sought. Visitors will also have the ability to preview media upon hovering. Here are some screenshots of some design mocks that de demonstrate the media-centered intent around our redesigns. We plan to add more actionable content to the PDP also, including highlighting compelling reviews, external reviews where applicable, adding an add-on content section in VR, and a panel for recommended similar apps to encourage extended engagement with the store and promote your app's discoverability. We're excited to start working on an effort to equip, AB te uh, to equip you to A-B test yourself to locally optimize assets and other content on your PDPs. The second category of developments is everything outside of the PDP. So outside of the PDP, we want uh, things to be more generally discoverable to appeal to users across the entire person's intent spectrum. A larger effort has been around catalog filtering and sorting which is now being tested on select pages on some of our platforms. While content catalogs range in size, depending on what HMDs they correspond to, we anticipate that filtering and sorting is gonna be an increasingly important feature in browsing the store with an ever-expanding title ecosystem. With this feature, we aim to target both high intent users, those that have specific criteria on category, star rating, and player mode, for example, and medium intent users, those that, have, those that are looking for apps in a broader category. Other efforts to improve discoverability include a smarter recommendation engine to power both the home feed and various store sections, and on-platform search, which I'll go into more detail in a little bit. Outside our immediate ecosystem, we plan on making experiences more accessible out of VR uh, with improved SEO to appeal to users not limited to just our ecosystem. As mentioned earlier, one of the primary ways we see high intent users convert is via search so much that we believe it's, it deserves its own subsection here. For the same reason, we plan to continue to invest in making this mode of discovery engaging and effective. Also mentioned earlier, we know from the nature of the queries that users are often searching for exact titles via full query execution or type ahead option. These account for 80% of the top most occurring queries. Here's a current flow for this. To further reduce friction along this funnel, we think, that we think it makes sense to land users directly on the PDP where they specify the exact title. 
You should see these, this feature being experimented on in the near future. The, the updated flow is depicted here where one, one of the steps has been kicked off to reduce friction along this path. For queries that do not correspond to titles that already exist in our catalog, which, uh, which accounts for about 20% of all uh, top queries, we want to make sure that we serve as many relevant results as possible without compromising precision. More technically, this means broadening the tags that are associated with each of our titles. Currently, these are mostly manually generated by developers. And we think this is a bit more limiting than an alternative approach. For example, imagine indexing organic tags that are mined very carefully from user reviews. Through this, we can potentially surface similar apps when store visitors specify an app that doesn't exist in the store or uses genre alias that's not currently recognized in our taxonomy. We also plan on broadening what's in, um, indexed in the first place and searchable by users, including bundles and add-on content. While our uh, current first search infrastructure serves how it's being currently employed, we think that uh, there's an opportunity in making it more versatile to variegate search use cases. Some other miscellaneous search improvements include um, adding recent searches to the null search state and an ML-based approach to relevance determination trained near real time with user feedback. That's a brief look into what we've been up to and some of what we've been up to in the store and why. Next, my colleague Joe will be talking about publisher and developer tools. Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm excited to talk to you today about tools that we're building to support publishers on the Oculus platform as they build VR businesses. We're thinking of two components to building a successful VR business. First, Success means generating more revenue for your apps. And second, success means driving more people back to your apps as you build sustainable communities around your content. Every publisher tool that we build should ladder up to one of these two concepts, building revenue and building communities in order to support your overall success. As of today, we're going to focus on building tools in three specific areas. Analytics, optimization, and connection. First, analytics. Analytics is all about helping you understand what is happening with your apps in the store. The purpose of giving you more information is to help you take action on your store presence to improve it. Information alone is interesting. However, our focus is on giving you the information you need to enable you to take specific actions that will help you reach your audience more effectively. Next. Optimization. Optimization is all about giving you tools to identify which improvement will have the most benefit and allowing you to test different ideas and pick the best. An example of an idea in this space would be giving you the ability to A-B test key art or your app's trailer. And finally, connection. Connection is all about helping you reach your audience and engage with your app's community. Altogether, we are empowering you with tools that help you analyze and optimize your store presence and connect with your communities. Now, I'll give you a quick preview of two publisher tools that we're announcing today. First, we have a new feature in analytics. In the developer portal, we already provide you with information about your app. We're going to enhance this app to give you insights that can help you improve your, stores, your presence in the store. So later this fall, we'll be adding purchase funnel metrics to the developer analytics page. These new metrics will give you visibility into how users discover and engage with your application before purchasing. Using this dashboard, you'll be able to see where your biggest opportunity to improve your store presence is, whether that's increasing your application's reach or improving your application's detail page, for instance. Since we want these dashboards to be actionable, we will be sharing best practices with you on how you can optimize your tile art, detail page information, and whatever else can help your apps be successful in the store. Using this dashboard, you'll be able to iterate and improve on your ability to connect with people. The recommendations we provide you will be specifically tailored to the, part, to the step in the funnel in which you would like to improve. A second feature that will be available this fall is developer posts. Developer posts is a way to create a community around your apps or brand. For people that already use your apps regularly, this will enable them to stay up to date on what's new in your VR community. These posts will appear in a new section of the product detail page as well as in the home feed. The posts will offer you the ability to add imagery, text, embedded video, 
and a deep link so they can transport your audience directly to a specific part of your VR application. Recognizing the importance of measuring impact, this feature also includes an update to the dashboard where impressions, clicks, and conversions can be viewed per developer post. This data can help you understand what types of content and messaging people engage with, allowing you to deliver messages that best resonate with your community. Finally, we want to help make sure that we're building the right tools to support you in the most helpful and impactful ways. In order to properly do that, we want to work with you to understand and prioritize the tools that will best support you as you build sustainable VR businesses. Feel free to start a conversation with me, find our team in the developer sandbox, or send an email to pubtools at oculus.com. After this, Jennifer and I will be in the developer sandbox to answer any follow-up questions that you have. Thank you.